Let me start like this. We are living in a very, very competitive world. Everything we have, the top 10 list, the Forbes uh, list publishes the top 500 companies who are doing remarkably well in the, well in the land. The medical world is publishing the top 10 doctors of this profession. Every profession, every um, uh, business, everything is trying to move themselves into the list of the top 10 or 50 or 100. Those who are seeking for universities, they always look. The university that I am going is within the top 50 or 100, whatever it is. Everybody looks at a ranking list. Verify how this place is really performing. What is the index? What is the metrics? Based on that metrics, people make decisions in life. When it comes to believers, when it comes to believers, the Spirit of God really desires you to be in one of the special lists heaven is keeping track of. Heaven is looking for believers, followers of Jesus Christ, to be in a very special list. You may ask, Pastor, are you going to say who is paying most in the church? Or who is spending more time in prayers? Or who is really doing many other activities to support the kingdom work? We may try to really analyze it in many aspects. But the word of God very precisely points out that heaven is for believers to be on a specific list. That list is the list of people who are becoming inheritors of the promise of God in their life today. Let me say it again. Heaven is looking for people who would be moved into the list of people who are inheritors of the promise of God in their lifetime today. Please join with me to the reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. Starting from verse 10. Book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 10 onwards. I am reading from the New King James Version. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name. In that... You have ministered to the saints and do minister. That means you are ministering to the saints. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now, go to verse 15. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise in his life. Father, I thank you for the word of God. Read in this occasion to minister to your people. To minister to your name. Spirit of God, everything meditated. You have exchanged in my heart. Come out. 
in its entirety to create the move of god having melody in the hearts of the people of god as we meditate together with the power of the spirit of earth the world exceedingly in the hearts of the people of god and let that word of god move them into the list of people who are inheritors of the promise of god father before i open and speak from the word of god father i make your no my name known and familiar and absolutely working in this place lord i believe and declare your presence to do what you have promised wherever jesus you went you heal the broken hearted you bind their wounds you heal the lame you heal the sick you heal the paralytic you cast the demon father right at the speaking of the word of god in this house of yours thank you lord you are here and in your manifested presence we believe and declare the same work what you did will happen occur in this house of yours so that the word of god will be preached with the boldness in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth we pray amen amen praise god i am very touched by the testimony from the young man praise god uh, sometimes prayers we pray and put it aside and waiting that the lord will really respond but even though we are not updating our list praise god heaven update the list and make a checklist answered answered praise god so glory be to god for that bold testimony and may the lord use this young man days to come to penetrate and pierce some of the clouds of darkness that is uh, permeating through the land through the systems lord arise men young men of integrity to speak the effect and impact of obeying the word of god and impacting and impacted by the power of the spirit of god even in their early young life amen praise god for the testimonies let me come back to this text to this morning here the writer of the book of hebrews is really challenging the body of believers to something very remarkable praise god we are called we are chosen we are elect and we are made holy and we are god's beloved people and we have been given so many promises in this book today i'm going to see how god fulfilled the promises praise god in 25 years how god fulfilled the promise 10 days and how promises in one day praise god so you can you get a a a a a, a picture a, a, a picture version of god answering prayers our god is not only a god who gives promises but our god is a god who keeps promises there are many people in this congregation who have received and experienced the promise of god in many aspect of their life they stand on the promise of god rigorously confessed believed and prayed without wavering and they experienced they received the promise of god at the same time there are many promises being still prayed on and waiting to be fulfilled in the lives of many others why i am choosing this passage God has a plan for you and me that we need to move ourselves into the list of the people who has to be inheritors of the promise of God. In this book of the Hebrews, the writer is really writing to a group of very noble believers. They are people who are given to serve the, the saints. If we, the, 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 the passage, the text started with a word of salutation, a word of salvation. commendable report of the believers in this hebrew congregation god is not unjust to forget the remarkable service you have rendered to the saints how you have taken for taken care of the suffering people how you have really fed them how you have provided them how you have been very much a, a standing force for the helpless and the needy god is honoring you you continue to do the same thing but there were a group of people in the church they thought how long we have to pray how long we are going to wait upon for seeing the things that we are confessing the promise of god how many days we have to wait 
how many weeks we have to pray for, how many months we have to. It has been a challenge in this congregation. It is a challenge even in our own life. Lord, how long I have to stay praying and waiting for fulfilling the promises you have given to us. This passage gives us a real direction. This passage gives us a real instruction. How you can. The instruction given to the body of the Hebrew believers is being. Praise God. Animated in this passage now so that it will build up. It will give us the dynamics to keep on praying and waiting upon for the promise of God to be fulfilled in our life. Here, in chapter 6, we read, our God is an art. Our God is never an unjust God. Sometimes our situations, Lord, how long I should pray? How long I should cry out? How long I have to wait upon you? Sankirtan Kanda Pashi Paranyala, Yan Etur Tola and the Ulil Vedan Sahiche, Pari Pram Vidiche, Narakan Divari. It is a very, 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 very causative type of statement. It is the real cry of a person who is, is, is waiting upon the hand of God to move in his situation. Has God forgotten to respond? Has God not going to stretch out his hands in this situation? Our mind will try to really speak to us in different dimensions and different directions. What the word of God is saying. Our God is not an unjust God. Our God In every situation you see that you are not seeing answers. Rather than complaining, you keep on confessing the God who is just God. The God is to pull you. To distract you with the circumstances and the pain. Praise God. Yes, it is real. We cannot avoid it. But yes, look at it for a minute. But turn around and say to the circumstance, the Lord whom I serve, he is never an unjust God. Praise God. Praise God. Then, he is not going to forget the service, the labor of love that has been rendered on his name in the last too many years. Months or years, or whatever period God has given you the opportunity to serve Him in that level of calling, in that level of faithfulness. It is all because we hold on to His name. We serve God not to get some fame. We never serve God to really do something or to please somebody. The, the moving thing, the, the, the working force, is the redemptive force in the heart of a child of God to serve God in an exceeding measure is to express our love to his holy name. To the Hebrew believers, the writer is really reminding this. You have, you have been so serving in your labor of love which you have shown towards his name. Praise God. People, when you are serving God, showing the level of love, not because of your love for your people. It is a love that is. Amen, 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 amen. Sprouting out because of your love for the Lord. Because of the love for the Lord, you take extraordinary steps. You really overcome situations and commit yourself to serve the Lord. Love because God is in the midst of every tabernacle of God. His river is flowing, not only the river, he made a stream to every tabernacle, to every, every house of God, to make them experience the flow of the river of life on a daily basis. That's why it's the son of Korog, uh, the sons of Korog really wrote down in the Psalms, there is a river whose streams make, there is only one river, but there are many streams that make every city of God glad. Praise God. So these Hebrew believers, they were ministering to the saints out of sheer love to the Lord in every way possible. Then the writer challenges them for the remarkable thing what they are doing. He says, we desire that 
each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end so do without any delay don't be sluggish don't be discouraged what you are doing is honorable the way you are serving the saints how the way you are, the way you are committed to do what is right because of the faithfulness of god in your life keep on doing without taking a deviation they are getting the full commendation and they are getting the full encouragement then he comes to the real thing praise god please focus on verse 12 you do not become sluggish you do not become distracted you do not get overwhelmed by your situation you have been called to do something great and you are doing your labor your duty in the right sense but you have to move to the next level you are going through so many afflictions you are going through so many trials you are going through so many trust while the introduction and the salutation and the applause is very good for their type of service to the kingdom the spirit of god is pointing something to elevate their relationship with the lord here this is what he is telling do not become sluggish that means one area they are getting sluggish one area they are getting very down they are in fact doing many great things but in one area they are really struggling praise god believers this morning who are hearing me you are doing many good things in serving god but there is one thing you know one thing you know this morning that you are struggling maybe you want share that with many people you are holding it in your chest you are holding it in your private time but the spirit of god knows that one thing where you are struggling especially your desire is to move yourself or to be in the top level to serve god and his kingdom but there are situations in your life that is pulling you back that is holding you back in hebrew is language when the when, when the when the writer is talking to the hebrew believers one thing praise god you are becoming sluggish he didn't tell them exactly what it is praise god he didn't tell these believers what area they are sluggish you know holy spirit when he's writing through the text the text is written beyond time beyond space it is written for every season this morning this passage is speaking to the body of believers praise god who are listening me here and who are listening over the line you are serving god with your best ability you are doing so many good things and god is recognizing it and you are being commended for your good works but there are areas private areas the spirit of god is speaking you very gently you are becoming sluggish praise god that one thing is holding you back in having you put into the name of the inheritance of the i want to speak it again that one thing that you are becoming sluggish believers saints of god praying people pray people who are excited about of god look at the one thing that is trying to pull you back that is trying to hold you back the purpose of the enemy is to hold you back having your name put up into the list of people who are inheritors of the promise of god did you hear me did you hear me it is applicable to every servant of god it is applicable to every child of god it applies to every man and woman every child who are followers of jesus christ we do many good things we serve him we pray we sing and 
we follow some of our rules list that the Spirit of God has laid in our hearts. Praise God for doing it diligently. But this morning, the one thing that you have been holding on, there is a record that is speaking to you that you are becoming very wary. And sometimes you, you, you challenge, you, your faith gets challenged in that one thing. How to deal with that? That is, that is what I'm trying to address today. Praise God. The Hebrew writer, the, 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 the writer of this passage, the word of God in this passage, is suddenly from there, going there to the man of faith. Praise God. How from a very Gentile background, from a community of idol worshippers, God called him. Out of his sovereign grace, he appeared to him and presented to him at the age of 75. He moved out. No, he, God appeared to him at the age of 75, but he moved out in his early days with his dad. He set out. He get himself liberated and moved out from the land of Ur in the region of Mesopotamia. I had the opportunity to visit that place. He gave him promises. He gave him blessings. Who are, I will, I will bless you and I will multiply you. Praise God. He just hold on to that word of God. He never had any written scriptures. He had no Bible in his hand. He heard the voice of God in a, in a unique way. He hold on to his heart. And he took his family and started his godly journey. He told, I will multiply you and make your uh, 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 children or your uh, uh, generation like the stars of the skies. He keep on praying and praying and praying and believing and, and continued his daily life. Days and years passed. If you look at the history, read the history in Genesis from chapter 12 to chapter 21, you can see it took almost 24 years against all hopelessness, against all impossibilities. Abraham, without any word of God, written word of God, without any published Word of God in the hand, hand. He hold it on. He hold it on. He daily confess. God has told me that he will do it. His, con his concubines, his, his, his wife, his other ma maids, different ways he has been distracted and distressed and he became sluggish in many things, but he come back and keep on confessing the word of God. After 25 years, God started working in his life. God started fulfilling his promise. He, the secret of really inheriting the promise of God is, is, is mentioned in this passage by the writer of Hebrews is, by patience, through faith and patience, we are called or we are chosen to inherit the promises of God. This morning, I just want to really say in, 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 in very, 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 very uh, uh, consolidated way. When Daniel was really in the land of the Babylon, he, he was asked, hey, you have all the delicacies of the land. But Daniel determined in his heart, I am going to hold on the promise of God. We are, we are a special type of people. I am not going to get defiled by the food of the Chaldeans or the Babylonians. I am not going to. I am going to stay myself apart. 
So the chief of the chef told Daniel, oh, Belshazzar, you are putting my life at risk. If you are going to follow your rules and the king sees that you are not standing in, in alignment with the, with the rest of the other team members of this team, you are putting my life in risk. Then Daniel told, try me for 10 days. Try me for 10 days. Praise God. This morning, praise God, he patiently waited and gave this chief of uh, that group, try me. I am holding on to the promise of God and I am giving a timeline. Try me for 10 days. Praise God. Because his, his cause is, he's going to prove that I am not going, going to get defiled by the land of the Gentile system. I am going to hold on what I know. What I am going to hold on to that promise and I am going to patiently, by faith, trying to put my life at risk for 10 days. You know the results. Daniel was never falling behind when the chief of the nuns uh, trying to verify him in front of the rest. Another situation. Let me, let me bring it before you. In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the prison in back in Philippi. Two men of God, Paul and Silas. Praise God, because of what they did for the kingdom of God. They were beaten or bruised, dragged and thrown and cast into the innermost cell in the night. Praise God. In the night you see in Acts Chapter 16, they started praising and honoring God. Even though they are absolutely shackled and bound with fetters and chains inside the prison, they keep on confessing the promise of God. And freedom came in the middle of the night. Praise God. Freedom came in the middle of the night through faith and through endurance. Praise God. There is a way for every believer to move yourself into the list of people who are inheritors of the promise of God. This morning, let me challenge you. God is looking for you. You have a test. You have an affliction. You have a difficult situation. Without test, there is no, no way you are going to be moved into the right who are inheritors of the promise of God. Your current challenge, my beloved, young man, young woman, hallelujah, man, woman, father, dad, grandfather, grandmother, including the preacher this morning, the trust you have is an opportunity that heaven is trying to dip you into the list of who are inheritors of the promise of God. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Don't fall back. Don't get sluggish. Don't complain. You in your Current of religion. Amen. Open the scripture. Consult a man of God who is willing to help you. Tell him to the promise of God. Keep it in your hand. Keep it in your heart. And hold on. When the fiery gods are coming at you, you hold on there in faith. Lord, I am taking my eyes upon you. Born in faith in the word of God. You are not only a promise making. You are a promise keeping God. Lord, it is this time regardless of the magnitude of the problem. Beloved, all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are raised and amen. Are you willing to hold on to the promise of God with faith in God? Faith in the word of God. Faith in the name of Jesus. Abraham did it. Daniel did it. Paul and Silas did it. And they are now being called the group of the crowd of witnesses that are standing and cheering. Praise God. Dear so-and-so, dear, dear so-and-so, dear child, dear young man, dear young woman, hold on to this promise, praise God, and move yourself into the ranking list of the believers, of the saints of God, who are now among the list of the inheritors of the promise of God. Let us close our eyes. Praise God, this morning, the Spirit of God is looking at you. Your current challenge, praise God, don't be sluggish. Don't be discouraged. I know the word of God is speaking to somebody here. The word of God is touching somebody who is over the phone. Hallelujah. This morning, oh, the body of believers hearing me here and over the line. Who, your current affliction is not, praise God, a, a termination notice. It is not. It is an opportunity for you as a believer to elevate you into the list of those who are already became inheritors of the promise of God. Oh, hallelujah. 
Let us pray with me for some time. Look at your current problem. If you don't have any problem, praise God. Don't worry. Problem comes without any invitation. Every child of God, every believer, every person is going to be challenged by situations and circumstances. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you going to cave in or I am going to open the promise of God? Stand on your knees. Hallelujah. Like Abraham did. Like Daniel did. Like Paul and Silas did. I am going to turn my eyes upon you. Hallelujah. I lift up my hills. I lift up my eyes unto the hills. My help comes from the Lord. Gracious Father. Those who are hearing me now. Father, I spoke the word. Praise God. In the time that is allowed. Father, you have the power. Your name is made known because I may know that you are a promise keeping God. People, those who are holding on the word of God and trusting you for answers. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, through the spoken word and the authority of the Spirit of God. Oh, the gift of the Spirit of God operating, operating through word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Praise God. Gift of healing and gift of miracles operate today. It is written. It is for the body of believers. It is how your church is in operation. Father, I believe and declare it's happening in the pew. Over the line, those who are receiving this word, your name. You are a merciful God. You are a merciful God. Thank you, Jesus, for touching your people with your word. We give you glory, honor, power, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.